Moo West Goose is finally here, which is its biggest update ever, dropping over 600 changes. And in this video, we're gonna go over each of those 600 changes one by one in meticulous detail. Just kidding, we're gonna cover the best of it, but huge shout out to the developers on all their work on this. I am super excited to dive in and finally get this installed on my Mi OS 3.4 XXSP, as well as my 3.5 XX Pro, which I don't think I've even tried yet because I refuse to use Amernix stock firmware. So let's dive into this sweet update. All right, so I popped over to MooOS.dev and the first thing we'll do is we'll head over to download and latest which will take us to the download page for Mustard OS Goose. I've noticed them starting to refer to it as Mustard OS a little more than Moo OS, but if you hear one and are expecting the other, just know that they're basically synonymous at this point. While on this page, let's be sure to read the important notices, such as if you're updating from Banana, make sure you do not have any themes or retro configs as major changes have occurred. And so as always with a Moo OS update, it's always best practice to back up anything that's important to you, any custom themes or retro configs, especially your save files, maybe even your ROM files, but just anything you'd be worried about losing, make sure you back it up somewhere else because there tend to be pretty uh, large and sometimes breaking changes going from one major MUOS update to the next. And right along with that, this is a major release, therefore it is a complete reflash, and so you will have to copy over your data anyway. If you prefer, you can use the MUOS backup and restore utilities and things like that. I prefer to just manually copy things off my SD card and then copy them back on, but it's completely user preference. Very important section to not glaze over is how you can support MooOS development. And there's the community forum, the Discord server, the GitHub repos to contribute yourself. You can support Zongobungle and Antic and Cory and Bitter Bizarro. And again, huge shout out to the devs and testers and overall community that makes MooOS happen. This OS has really supercharged what we can get out of these handhelds and we are very grateful. And on down here, we'll see the many, many, many changes, the fixes, the optimizations, and the removed as well as the updated. So lots of changes happening here. Let's go ahead and go download from the go file. And I'm going to start with the handheld that I've been waiting very long for an official move as image for. And that is my RG34XX SP. Let's grab that guy right here. Save that download. And while we're here, I'll go ahead and grab the RG35XX Pro image as well. Grab that. All right, and once those downloads have completed here, we're gonna go ahead and fire up Balena Etcher or whatever you prefer, but I'm on Mac and this is kind of the premier choice, at least for me. I don't have to do any backup. As you can see, this SD card used to be for a switch and I have nothing on here I care about. And so I'm just gonna blow this card away completely. But again, it is strongly recommended to back up any save files, save states, ROMs, themes, really anything that you'd be sad about if that SD card wound up in the lake or you would just want to bring back over to your new MUOS installation, definitely make sure that's backed up with your preferred method and then proceed with this next step. Once you've done that, we can go flash from file and we'll choose the one for our build. In this case, I want this one here for the 3.4 XXSP, select my target. Usually it's just the only one that's visible unless you have a ton of stuff connected, but that's my 32 gig SD card. And we'll choose flash, punch in my computer password and she's off. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish flashing and then I'll flash the one for the 3.5XX Pro and then we'll go ahead and boot up these handhelds in just a second. All right, and here we are with MooOS Goose. You can see in all of its shiny glory, the beautiful front end menu system. The menu system actually got a bit of an overhaul. We're gonna talk about that later, but you can just tell right away from the menu and as you start clicking around through the sub menus, that there is just yet another iteration of polish on MooOS, which we love to see. You can tell the developers have put a lot of love, sweat, and tears into developing this, and so huge shout out again to them. If I don't mention it, maybe something that you worked on in this video, or maybe it's your favorite feature that has changed and improved in MooOS, my apologies, but also let me know in the comments below what I missed because again, there are 600 plus changes in this iteration, which is insane. I know that the combination of all these changes is just gonna make this that much more of a complete experience for maximizing what we can get out of these still relatively inexpensive retro handhelds, which I'm super pumped about. All right, to kick off our testing, let's fire up Lego Racers. I like using the standalone core using Moopin64 Plus Next Rice plugin. Ah yes, buttery smooth. Oh yeah, let's go. Reason I choose a 64 game is because I want to be able to check out the joysticks. Yeah, there we go. The joystick support, because as mentioned, this is, wow, this supports a lot of languages. Wow, 
There we go. Because as mentioned, this is the first official build of Moo OS that supports the RG34X XSP, which I've been really pumped about because you all know that I love my 35X XSP, and this is sort of the next evolution of that, where we add some joysticks, which I'm really pumped for, especially for moonlight streaming, because with some joysticks and this compact form factor and this nice kind of aspect ratio adjustment, I think I'll be able to get a lot out of this handheld. Plus, just it just feels a lot tighter. It felt a little bulky and loose, but they really kind of tightened up the chassis, added these nice grip groups here. Like, this feels more like the Ambernic SP Pro uh, to me, which, uh, you know, they change their names crazily all the time. So whatever they want to call it, I'm glad this one exists, and I'm glad it finally runs MooWest. There we go, joystick beauty, fantastic. All right. And I will admit, this is actually my first time ever playing LEGO Racers, but I was missing out, clearly. And so of the 10 changes we're gonna check out in this video, number 10 is new hotkey changes. And so the reason I booted into a game is we actually have a new screenshot combo. And so if you do L2 plus R2 plus X, it just buzzed and we just took a screenshot, which is fantastic. So now screenshots are much more accessible. And I think even I'll be able to remember that shortcut because it's the two protruding bumper buttons, at least on most Ambernic handhelds. I think it's M plus X to get into the RetroArch menu when you're using a RetroArch core. So that's sick. If you choose L2 plus R2 plus A, that is your D-pad analog versus digital toggle. Meaning that if I didn't have these joysticks and I wanted this D-pad to act like a joystick, go ahead and hit that. And now, what the dog doing? Oh, hello. I just looked it up and the shortcut doesn't work on this handheld because it does have analog sticks. But if you don't have analog sticks, then L2, R2, and A would be your switch for the D-pad. Other shortcut changes, now it's just a single press of the power button instead of a two second hold to get to sleep function. So just tap that, sleeping. And then to wake it back up, we'll just tap the power button. I hear it, come on back, come back, hello. Okay, I think I screwed something up. But yes, single tap of the power button to put it to sleep. And then however you tend to wake up your hammer and a handheld is how you'd wake it up, which uh, evidently I don't use the sleep function very often. So I'll do the good old, oh, oh, hey, there he is. When in doubt, monkey with the reset button too, and there we go. And then speaking of waking from sleep, while it's charging, you can just press the start button to kind of get that waking screen while it's in charging mode, which was changed from the power button, I guess, to avoid hotkey conflicts. Last thing on hotkeys is I would recommend checking out the homepage of the MooOS.dev site, as there's a very handy table covering all the hotkeys, as well as the before goose and after goose variants of them. There are ones in here I didn't even know were there, like apparently you can do menu plus Y to toggle the FPS off and on, kick in fast forward and slow motion and shuffle content and cycle the save state that you're going to load or drive so apparently I've been going into the menu way more than I need, so definitely worth taking a look at that. Number nine of our changes is activity tracker and playtime stats. So now if you hop into some content and choose your menu for info on that, you'll see, look at that. We have times launched as well as time played. I think my time played got screwed up when I basically had to reset the console out of playing midway there, but you can now see, hey, how long have you been enjoying this for? And you can kind of get those stats to flex on Twitter or Discord or wherever else the kids put their play stats these days. Back in my day, we just looked at the Wii message board and it told us how much we've been playing for and that was the flex. Also while we're in this menu is number eight, which is content tagging system. You can see here we have glyph tag. And if you click on that, we can actually tag our ROMs as abandoned alternate backlog Cursed, experimental, homebrew, in progress, none, patch, replay, ROM hack, translated. That is super nice. Like, let's say, yeah, in progress. I've now started it. Let's go ahead and save that there. And now we have a little glyph there where I can see, ah, that is an in progress guy. Okay, okay. And of course, we can also throw it into a collection, which we can create a new collection. I think these were introduced in the um, last MooOS update, but you can also sort things into collections and now you can, in those collections, there we go. So yeah, they've been doing a good job at adding more organization features. So now you can both, you know, add things to collections, like I've saved this to my 111 collection, but then within that collection, we can also see uh, that the glyph is in there. I think I marked it as a favorite too. And you can see your in-progress glyph or your curse glyph and all that. So that's super nice. The more we can keep sense of our ROM libraries, which some of them are pretty huge, is ideal. Next up is one that I'm very excited to check out. Apparently, if you go into your customization down to the theme picker, Yes, and then we have theme download now, which is super cool. As you know from previous videos, before you had to, in the OG days, go to the MooOS Discord, find the one you liked, hoped it was compatible, 
copy it over and then follow the specific instructions for that theme to unload it onto your MUOS install. And back in the day, if uh, you botched it, you could actually like kind of lock yourself out of MUOS. So they've improved the theming system over the various updates. And now they have a nice curated theme section on the main website. But evidently now they've taken that even a step further. And now they have a nice little right on device theme manager, which I'm so stoked to check out. Oh my. Oh, it has previews. Oh, no way. This is one I made. Did someone update this for modern MUOS? I didn't even update this theme yet. Well, let's try my own uh, DSOS, shall we? That was the other one I made. Oh, there's a lot of good ones. Wow, look at this. <gasps> Moo XP! Oh my gosh. I did not think my own themes were gonna be on here, honestly. I kind of like didn't really abandon them. I just, there were too many changes to the theming engine and I didn't, uh, ooh, that's beautiful. I'm also gonna grab one, two. This is really snappy. Okay, I'm so excited to find out if my own themes work or if they like break MUOS. <laughs> like, do they just put them all on here and like it's up to you to find out if they uh, work or not? Let's, let's see. All right, Moo XP, don't fail me now. Oh, it's going, install complete. Oh, that looks pretty good. What? Either someone updated my theme or they've added some like backwards compatibility, but this is as good as my Moo XP theme has ever looked, complete with my lack of contrast. <laughs> Little uh, gray on dark blue there. Good job, Coulter. But I am pleased as punch. I did not expect for my own themes to be in that theme downloader let alone for them to work on MooS Goose so well. I thought they broke on the last iteration. So thank you MooS theming team, this is sick. And dang, I am loving how easy and clean that was to just browse themes and download them and install them. Like that is a massive, massive improvement to the old ways. Like look, 127 themes, all just beautifully indexed. Ooh, Canto S, yeah, we need that. Oh, and there was a Windows 98 one, wasn't there? Yeah, Moo 98. I'm just having a great time right now. I love themes. Yeah. Oh, Moo Ubuntu. Come on, boy. I don't know who made these. If you made these, big shout out. Much love. Big fan of Moo DS. The lad who made Moo DS is a, is a bro and a half who helped me actually learn how to make my themes back in the day before there was much documentation. So much thanks there. Oh, man. I am nerding out hard. Okay, as much as I love my own theme, I need to give some love to Moo98. Oh, come on, son. That's freaking beautiful. Look at the control panel. Oh, how hard did they go? Is it a different window when I, oh. I really hope I inspired this with Moo XP because this feels similar, but like they just, they went so much harder and I love it. Information, yeah, beautiful. Configuration, oh goodness gracious. This little, <laughs> little sheep in the corner. Oh, and they go programs when you're in programs, nice. History, they themed that. Favorites, nice. Explore, that's your C drive? Come on, son. Come on, son. Oh, okay. I've got to pull myself back, but obviously, number seven, theme download manager is a huge one for me, and I am stoked about this one. Frick yeah. Number six is network improvements. So you may have experienced this where you go to connect to your Wi-Fi, but then the next time you boot up your console, it isn't connecting to Wi-Fi again. And you have to go back in and you have to hopefully try to use the profiles feature to save it as a profile and then restore that and then connect when you reboot, which is honestly quite a bit of a pain. And so now you'll notice when you're on the screen, you'll see both connection monitor and start network on boot. And from what I understand, the network monitor is a sort of watchdog to prevent the random disconnections that would happen quite a lot. And the start network on boot, obviously now you can actually tell it to start network on boot. Super convenient, thank you so much for that. These were bugging me quite a bit because as you guys probably know, I like to go into web services and turn on SFTP and file browsers so I can access MooOS from the browser just using the IP colon 9090 and then I can copy ROMs to and from kind of thing. But when your handheld randomly goes offline, those features mean nothing. And so that helps a lot, thank you very much. And that takes us over to number five, which is the improved backup system. So if we go back into configuration, I believe, and then device backup. Yes. In here, you'll see a lot of options for where to back up the various aspects of MooOS and your files. And then you can just go ahead and fire up start backup at the bottom of that to just slay, slay? Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. To yeet all of these into their appropriate folders. Why am I trying to be young? I'm a millennial, get over it. <laughs> but anyway, backup good, lots of options, lots of things we can back up. This is good. 
And look at that, it even includes the new uh, game activity tracker data. So that can now be stored and backed up. So that's sick. And I believe the way you restore from that backup manager is the archive manager, but uh, I'd have to double check that. So let me know in the comments if you recall and I can update the uh, description or pinned comment with that info. The number four improvement going back into config connectivity and web services is if you check, you'll see a new option here called Virtual Terminal, which is the new term terminal emulator. So that means you can access via the web browser a virtual terminal to modify and access all the things in your MIUI install you might want to. Granted, that requires that you need familiarity with a Linux command line, but if that's your jam, then you've got that covered now. And I guess if that's your jam and you don't want to just SSH into it with Secure Shell, then you've got that flavor of jam now. Improvement number three is a kiosk mode overhaul. So it is now easier to jump into kiosk mode. I haven't configured kiosk mode before or played with it very much, but essentially what kiosk mode is, is a way to refine which collections or games maybe you only want your kids to see and you don't want them to see your broader library for some reason. And so you can pop it into kiosk mode so it's safe just to hand the handheld to them or maybe the handheld you're not using as much to them. I kind of forgot this was sitting here, but sorry, 356 Pro, but Look at you, also running MooOS. Good job. Then you can just toss it over to your kids and they can play to their heart's content. And that new combo is L1 plus R2 plus Y. And I didn't think that would do anything because I don't have any kiosk modes configured, but that's what you would do to get that activated. As for how to get out of kiosk mode, I couldn't find any documentation about that, but I presume that given that the shortcut says that L1, R2, Y, is kiosk mode settings. I presume that's where you would set your sort of pin for kiosk mode, and that pin would be how you would then get out of kiosk mode, probably also using L1, R2, Y to activate that screen where you could input that and back out to your main screen. If I'm wrong on that, and if you're an adamant user of kiosk mode, please let me know in the comments below. Our number two big win is the major front end refactor. And so you may notice that the front end feels snappy AF. And a big part of that is because they've really overhauled the rendering system to have much smoother navigation because now it only needs a single process to run it. Before there was kind of more stuff going on. Kind of long story short is it's much more stable now. And a big benefit to you is that the less that there is operating under the hood to run things like the menus, the more power and battery there's available for your gaming, which is the reason we come to these things in the first place. And the last, but certainly not least, major improvement in MooOS Goose is TrimUI device support. This is of course the TrimUI brick with its lovely metal, I was gonna say metal exterior, but metal backing. It's just, it's a very solid, chunky, lovely handheld. And it's always been a shame that it's been shortchanged by its software to a degree. Not that its software is bad by any means, and there's actually a lot of very cool improvements going on specific to the TrimUI devices custom firmware space. But I am a huge fan of MooOS and not having MooOS on these devices has definitely shortchanged how much I've been using them. And so now, finally, MooOS is officially supported on both the TrimUI Brick and the TrimUI Smart Pro, which is that one that looks kind of PSP, PS Vita-y. I haven't installed it on this guy right now as I need it to stay stock for another reason, but once it's fired up, it should operate just like you'd expect on our lovely Amberdeck devices, but instead you'll be rocking it on some sick TrimUI hardware. So big kudos to the MooOS team that could not have been easy to port because these are built in a very different way than Ambernic running it on basically the same chip all the time. And so big kudos to the MooOS team. It could not have been easy to port MooOS to an entirely different handheld. It's difficult enough, I know, to port MooOS between the various Ambernic handhelds, despite the fact that they all run on basically the exact same chip. They still change enough in their screen drivers and their joysticks and all that, that there's still a lot of work to do in the porting between these various handhelds. And so to hop to an entirely different manufacturer, that could not have been a simple feat. So massive shout out to the devs on that one. And massive shout out to you for watching to the end of this video. Again, there were over 600 updates and improvements and changes in this version of MooOS Goose. And so I recommend checking them all out on the MooOS release notes. And if I missed anything, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and check out the last MooOS video we did because MooOS is just awesome and I've done too many videos about it.